In this video we're going to talk about solving percent problems using proportions. And now I will be honest here, uh, I, I find this particular method of solving percent problems uh, it, it personally difficult because I have a very tough time distinguishing which number belongs where. Uh, but I have discovered uh, it through my own use, and, and so I've done this several hundred times, it seems like, uh, that there really is a structure behind it, and the structure tends to stay the same. So uh, the way that I've come, up, come at this is rather than looking at it as a proportion and trying to decide what of and, and is and all that, um, all those words mean in relation to the proportion we're trying to use, think of the proportion as nothing but the equality of two fractions. And so when, I, w when, uh, when you first come across fractions, we describe them as the number of parts that you're talking about divided by the number of parts that we cut the whole thing up into. And, and so in this instance, we're kind of going back to the pi example where if I want two pieces of pie but I cut the piece or cut the pie into four pieces then the top number two the number of pieces I want is divided by the bottom number four the number of parts I cut the pie into so I'm taking two-fourths of the pie the idea is going to continue on for these proportions the only difference is one of the proportions is the percent and remember, percent refers to a number divided by 100. And so that's kind of nice. It, it, it's automatic for that. So here's the structure that I have found. The percent, what percent, what is always, uh, is still, still that, that unknown. If I'm asking about it, I, I don't know what it is. So let's go ahead and write that down. What percent is x? per cent per cent divided by 100 now of denotes the whole the ratio the other ratio is whole so of 64 this is the whole and so that number always goes on the bottom remember in the if you we were solving percent problems using equations of meant you multiply Oddly enough, when you cross multiply in these proportions, you'll find out that, in fact, the of will multiply into the unknown, or x. And so the, the third number here, and I'm going to do this one in, uh, in green to kind of separate it. The third number, by process of elimination, this is going to be the top. That's going to be the part that you're looking for. And so if we go ahead and solve this proportion, then we can cross multiply. Remember you multiply across the equal sign, not division. Be very, very careful, and I know I'm going to irritate some teachers out there. I have found at college, when I have to go back and reteach this stuff, many students remember it incorrectly. And so I do not care for that it causes too many issues much like the dreaded foil and so I have 64 X is equal to 32 times 100 I'm gonna let that be right now and the reason being is uh, I, I think that I can make it a little bit better uh, because I can reduce it now if you have a calculator obviously you can just go ahead and, and expand that out to 3200 however I don't have a calculator I do not like them. They tend to be quite slow and they don't tell me anything. So I have here, I notice that I have 32 over 64. I recognize that as one half. Well, what's one half of 100? 50. And so 50% 50 of 64 is 32. About half of 64 is 32. And you'll notice that because x is in over 100 over here, that we in fact do get the 50 out, not the 0.5. The other one gave us a decimal. This gives us the actual percentage because of the way that we defined it. So I've got a few more examples here that we're going to kind of just walk through. 
and we're going to walk through it the same way. Remember the of, this is the whole. What percentage refers to some unknown divided by 100? And so to set up our proportion, what percentage? Okay, 48 is what percent of 60? Well, it's still just 60 goes on the bottom as the whole. What percentage goes on one side and then 48 on the other? And you'll notice it sets up exactly like the previous problem. So we're going we're gonna to go solve it exactly the same way. I'm going to cross multiply. Give me 60x is equal to 48 times 100. And then I'm going to divide by 60. Again, I don't personally use a calculator just because it's, I don't know, I, I just don't. I guess I'm old school. <laughs> so x equals, now the, six, the, the 0 here cancels with 0 here since I'm multiplying. 6 goes into 48 8 times, and so I have 8 times 10, which is 80. So x is 80. So 80%. What percent? 80%. What percent? Eighty percent. All of these work like this. So let's do a couple more, but we'll change up this what it looks like. 200% of 6 is what? Okay. Well, notice that our of 6, this is our whole, is, this is our part, it is not a percentage, our percentage is in fact 200. Okay, so percentage is 200 per cent equals the part I don't know the whole is 6 now in this problem I'm gonna do it slightly differently I'm gonna use a little bit of algebra on this and say okay what am I doing to the variable I am dividing the variable I'm dividing the variable by something to get rid of the dividing part I am simply going to multiply both sides by 6. And the 6 goes on top because that way we have 6 divided by 6 is 1 and 1 times any number is just that number. The identity property of multiplication. And so now I can split this up and say okay well 6 times 2 is 1200 divided by 100 is 12. And you'll notice I did it in one step rather than two. If you are not comfortable in this, that is perfectly fine. There is nothing wrong with doing it either way. It's simply that if you have more ways of doing something, you can choose which way to do it based on the situation that you have in front of you. If you only know one way, you can't. Okay, so there's the answer. Now, it is not a percentage. We know the percentage. So don't put a percent at the end of it. But 200% of 6 is what? Well, twice. 200% is twice of something. So 2 times 6 is 12. And that makes sense. Okay, one last problem here, and, and we'll let it be. 18 is 40% of what? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set it in the proportion, just like I did. My 40% goes as 40 per 100. That is... And now, 18 is of what? Of what? This is my whole. I do not know my whole. And so, my whole is going to be x. 18 is my part. It's next to is. And so now, in this case, because my x is on the bottom, I cannot just simply divide by 18 and call it good. Because the x had to be on top. You'll notice in the previous example, x was on top. In order to solve for a variable, I have to have the variable on the top. And so I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. When in doubt, I just go with what's easy. And again, I run into this problem where uh, I have this multiplication over here. You can do that for 1800. Then you just simply divide both sides by 40 to solve for x. Now, 40 divided by 40. You'll notice I'm crossing this out. 40 divided by 40 is what I'm doing first. I can do multiplication in any order, so I do my 40 divided by 40 times x. 
So I'm going to do that first and group that. So 40 divided by 40 is 1. 1 times anything is that something. And then I cross a 0 out with a 0 here. And then I notice that I have a 2 here and a 2 here to, give me, to get rid of the 4. And then I have 45 at the end. This is not a percentage. We are not looking for a percent. We know that. And so this is, in fact, just a number. And that's how you work with proportions and in, in percent problems.